My name is Amy Syed. I am the owner of Dream Dinners in Framingham, Massachusetts. It's a, um, a franchise location. Um, and, you know, our what is our goal? Our goal is to help families get join around the dinner table for dinner. Um, we Our tagline is homemade made simple. And the way that we do that is that we have a fixed menu and we provide you all of the prepped ingredients, the cooking instructions, and you go home and you cook them. And that is our, uh, you know, that's our goal here. And it's been, um, it's been a great ride. It's, I am um, month six right now of my business ownership. And what a great ride it's been. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Amy, this is great because um, yes. Amy and I, full disclosure, we were in our MBA programs together. Um, Correct. Like it was like um, 10 years ago, well, we're going mm -hmm. that the world imploded the first time. So, mm -hmm. oh, well, I'm sorry, the world imploded the last time. Um, <laughs> uh, economy was bottoming, bottoming out. Um, my company came out of my capstone during my MBA program. And I just like, I mean, I just like, we had very, very little women in our MBA class, which was shocking in 2009, where it was dominated by men. It was like, like less than 10% of women in an MBA program in 2009. So ridiculous. It was. Um, and so I, you know, like you're on LinkedIn and people like the updates and what's going on. And all of a sudden, Madame Corporate went and started her own business. I'm like, what? Yes. What's happening here? I go, and you started you started it and of course the world imploded. I'm like, what? This is the best conversation ever. So what happened? What happened? Tell me, tell so, me. Um, what happened. Yeah. So, um, as you know, as you mentioned, I, I, I was in corporate America for almost 22 years, um, started right fresh out of college into corporate America. I was at a fortune 100, um, insurance company and, um, you know, the world, you know, the world has definitely changed a lot in the few, past few months, but the world had been changing up until that point, particularly in corporate America. Um, there was so much focus on expenses and savings. And I, I, it just became an environment that I didn't, I, I didn't thrive in it anymore. Um, I def, I felt that I needed to be in an environment that I was able to exercise a bit more of my um, creative thinking, mm -hmm. um, that I was able to um, have more of an impact on people's day-to-day -day lives. Um, and then also, quite frankly, the commute sucked. <laughs> so, um, you know, what happened was a little over a year ago, the um i had been a customer of this particular location for approximately three years um i loved the product i loved the people and i loved what the the what the company stood for um and the current owners were looking to retire and they you know it was a it was one of those things that they reached out to me on a friday thought at first that you know my initial reaction was yeah, no. And then I kept thinking about it more and more and saying, well, why not? Um, and, you know, as, as I thought about it, I talked about it with my husband and, you know, it seemed like, and it has been, it was a great opportunity and it has allowed me to, you know, not only just incorporate many of the skill sets I've learned through the years in corporate America, but also at the same time to, um, to strengthen some of my other skills that I didn't have as much of an opportunity. Um, and it also, it, it allows me to have that direct impact on people's lives. Um, and, you know, and the pandemic, quite frankly, has just helped that. Um, so many, so many, you know, I will say primarily our customer base is working moms. And many of these working moms are now having the dual responsibility of working and homeschooling their children and that's where we've we've really been able to have a significant impact on their lives um they don't have to worry about what they're going to make for dinner at, at the end of the day after they've had a very stressful day of, of juggling multiple responsibilities 
Um, and it, it's, it's just been, it's been very rewarding. Um, but it, you know, that's really, that's how I got here. Um, it's been, it's been a great, it's been a great ride. Never did I imagine that when I signed the papers on January 1st, that I would be in this situation, but you know what? That's where I am. And that's where, um, I always take challenges as a opportunity to learn. And this has been a perfect example of that. All right. So I, I have to chime in, um, mm -hmm. for my first franchise, this is like my first, all right, wait, so yeah, this is going to be, this is where we're on live. Literally my windows are open and literally the next door neighbor is talking super loud. So hold on. <laughs> it's not a problem. Okay. Watch, at some point in time, my dogs will probably come in too. Like, so. no, that's, no, dogs and babies are totally allowed. Neighbors <laughs> outside, not okay. Not yeah. okay. All right. So, um, you're my first franchise. Yeah. Most people don't even think about that as a business. And so yeah. more about like, why would you, I mean, when did you want to own your own business? Because like, yes, you retired with corporate. Did you want to own your own business? And you could have started something from scratch. I could have. And I mean, do, and during our MBA program, more of the people that were, a lot of people who had either taken over their family owned businesses or mm -hmm. were finding like elderly individuals that were retiring and they were just taking over the entire business because now I'm an entrepreneur, but I don't have to start from scratch. Why the franchise, franchise route? Is it just because these people were here and it just landed in your lap? Was that what you were looking for? Or um, did you um, your own business um, before? I mean, how did that? Yeah, happen? no, um, it, it's a little bit of landing right in my lap. Um, quite frankly, um, but I can tell you a little bit more about um, what the benefits of a franchise have, and that is, I have a very strong support system. Mm -hmm. um, I have a group of seventy-five other owners that are going through many of the same challenges that I am, and um, it's a—they're an absolute. They've been an absolute lifesaver for me in the past few months. Um, and, and I also have a very strong um, corporate leadership team. The, um, the actual founder of the company is still the CEO. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just, it's, a, it's an amazing support network. Um, you do have to be very careful with a franchise, of course, because you are very restricted to that franchise um, mission and the agreement that you sign. Mm -hmm. However, if you find a franchise that strongly aligns with not just your beliefs, but what you're looking to accomplish, it's, it's, it's great. It's great. It's Cause you still have the, you know, you still have that flexibility to exercise um, what you feel is best, but then you also have this great toolkit, this great support system in place um, to help you. I think that's um, one of the things that people don't think about when they're looking into a business. Um, and uh, some of, especially in Massachusetts, a lot of the like um, small, the family owned businesses are franchises. So when I, I worked at a, a location where I did a lot of work for small businesses and it was amazing because the, the knowledge of the family owned businesses where there's one family that is in um, Western Massachusetts, or not like not far, like I should say central Massachusetts. And, um, he owned three McDonald's and when each of his children, he has three children, when each of them graduated mm -hmm. from college, he bought them each a McDonald's. <laughs> and so from, and he, the money yeah. from his three and now they have built up. And so that family owns a very large amount of, Ma of McDonald's in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Franchise was perfect for them. They knew the system. The kids grew up in it and it became very, very large. Same thing with Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts very franchise as well. So it's a, it's a concept that most people don't think about. What was the, um, the high, high, high and the low, low, low of owning your own business? Um, in the, just in the past five months. Yeah. So absolutely. You're, you're a starter. Um, so like you yeah, are in essence, yeah. that person where that's like that person that left the job. Like you are that individual that I've been talking about to everyone where, what if you just decide to leave your job and during the, <laughs> what would you do you are it you are so perfect right now um i can tell you that uh, and it's funny just a quick you know i had reflected just a few days ago and i had my staff meeting last night about this and i said you know what guys i have now been an owner a small business owner 
for longer in a pandemic state than I was in a steady state. Um, and that was a realization I had last night. I was like, wow. But, you know, quite frankly, the, the high has been the, you know, food has been a difficult thing for people to get right now. Mm -hmm. um, and the high has been truly just the customers that say to me, thank you, thank you, thank you. You are, you have tremendously helped me get through this process. And that has been the absolute high. Um, what has been the low? Um, you know, realizing at the beginning of this all, when I say the beginning, I'm saying around mid-March, um, when it became very apparent that we were in the pandemic state we were in, and this was before quite, you know, this was before our governor was making the closings and all that. The, the amount of responsibility that you have on your shoulders and the decisions that you're making, um, you know, not just my customers, but primarily my employees and knowing that the decisions that I am making and what, how that would impact them, how it would impact their livelihood, how it, you know, and then as I continued on the decisions I'm making and how that would impact their health, mm -hmm. um, making sure that I'm keeping my employees safe making sure that they are not getting sick. That has been the low because that, you know, that was not what I, you know, it's not what you thought you were signing up for when you're becoming a small business owner, that um, the key decisions that you are making is going to have such a significant impact on my employees' lives. Yeah. And that has been the low in all of this. Um, but in summary, the high has just been being able to service people and be in that. Yeah, you know, and as I started off with, that's why I wanted to do this. That's where um, I, be, you know, just feeling good about yourself at the end of the day, knowing that you've had such a significant impact in someone's day to day life. Um, but the low has been knowing that many of the decisions I was being required to make, mm -hmm. and what, um, and the impact that that could have on my employees ability to make a life living and then also their um their just their health uh walk me through how the process goes like i mean how like, if i joined on as a customer right now yep. walk me through the process because like when you said that making sure that you're taking care of your employees and making sure they're not getting sick why would they like so like how does it how is it how does it roll sure so um you know traditionally and I say that traditionally, um, our customers come into our storefront. We have a storefront um, and we have um, all, of the, all of the raw ingredients prepped for a customer to um, assemble their meals. Um, like I've got a box delivered to my door? No, no, you, it's, a, it's, oh. a, it's a brick and mortar. And okay. I, so in the information that I gave you, I did give you a shortcut that has a, a very quick minute and a half video that taught that visualizes this process a bit more okay. so the customer is coming into our store they are they are assembling their meals they are deciding if there's ingredients that don't that their their families will not like you know are they are they trying to cut back on salt are there is their child dislike mushrooms those are the type of things that um you know, as the customer is coming into the store, they're making those decisions for their families. Okay. Um, so once it became, um, you know, once it became apparent that we were, you know, that social, that being close together like that and having to have social distancing, um, my customers could no longer come into my store. Mm -hmm. And that was a decision I made um, before Governor Baker did that for me. Yeah. Um, so that was that was where i had so now we are um we're assembling all the meals for our customers okay. um and having to pivot your process your operational process that's been in place 15 years mm -hmm. in a span of it was honestly two to three days of completely turning your process around and doing something different mm -hmm. um <laughs> that was quite a that was quite a challenge so that and, being said, and how big how big is your team to do this? Um, so we, I have um, two I have two managers. One of them an operational manager, one a sales manager. 
both amazing, but no, could not have done this without them. And then I have um, approximately 10 part-time employees. Okay. Some of them that work a bit more than others and some of them that are more senior than others. Mm -hmm. um, um, but that, that, you know, that's my team of employees. Um, the other thing that's been quite a bit of a challenge is that um, most, most essential workers that you have seen have been operating in a team atmosphere or team function. Mm -hmm. And that's to ensure that if something were to happen to one of the teams, if you did have an employee that became ill and you needed to self quarantine, you could still continue operating. So, so, it's, I, so it's just that team would that yeah. team would actually go. Oh, that's actually very smart. No one's talking about that. Um, it's not quite something. Quite frankly, it wasn't something I would have thought of immediately. It was. It was. But I'm very glad someone um, gave me that tip up front. Um, but yeah, you have to. Um, so I haven't seen some of these people in person in two and a half months. Um, I've, I've seen them through windows because I have <laughs> on a few times stopped by. Um, but some of these people I, I literally have not worked with in two and a half months. So, um, but in that team, in that team function, you have the additional complexity of communication. So, mm -hmm. um, but that's really what we've done is that we've, we've closed our doors to our customers. We, we assemble all the meals for our customers. Okay. Um, they, they come in a curbside pickup function and we are, you know, having zero contact with them to um, to drop their orders in their car. And and we've been pleasantly surprised because the, you know, because a lot of our, our just our basis of operations has been, you're able to customize things. Yep. And um, yes, you know, obviously we can do a lot of the customization as long as the customers tell. Well, I was going to ask you, like, I go, are they calling in advance to ask what they want or it's just not doable? Yeah, they are. It's like we have a set yeah. menu now. We do. Uh -huh. We have a set menu. We have, um, we usually have 19 meals every month. Mm -hmm. um, so, but of course the customers aren't necessarily seeing the ingredients of those meals. So, you know, for the standard things like, oh, I'm not, I, I don't add salt, I have pepper, those type of things we can do. Um, mm -hmm. But there are, you know, we, we've been pleasantly surprised. Most customers, um, we did have a few customers at the beginning that said, I'm not feeling, com I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel comfortable having um, someone preparing my meals for me in yeah. particularly this time. And, you know, it's, it was unfortunate and we, you know, we're keeping in contact with them and we hope they'll be back. But we've also seen a tremendous amount of um, customers, what we call lost customers, customers that had, um, that our product no longer um, met their family's needs. And well, yeah. So we, you know, we had a, we had, I, my store in, in March saw the highest revenue it has ever seen. Um, People got sick and, and tired of cooking themselves. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, and just also it was, um, it was definitely, it was also a time where people, you know, were having difficulty finding things in supermarkets. Mm -hmm. um, and because we are, you know, we have a direct wholesale um, um, food chain, I was still able to get many, I, I, I do have a few small things that I'm not able to get nowadays. Um, but for the most part, most of my menu items have been, um, I've been able to continue to offer. So that has been another, you know, and, and just, it's, it's the one stop, you know, someone's getting all the items for you. And the other part of it is I'm not, I haven't been charging a fee for that too. Okay. Um, just cause I didn't feel that was appropriate because, um, my customers didn't have a, they, that was the only way they could do it. So they're going to remember that. I mean, they're going to remember that yeah. companies that are taking care of them right now. Um, they're going to remember that when they want to come back or if they, or they're just going to have a longer relationship with you, which is a good thing. Um, yes, that's, that was my thing. Uh, <laughs> um, how, are your, how, are you, how are your employees doing? I mean, whether they are working in clusters, um, they're dealing with all of this. Uh, thank goodness they've always had a, they have a job. But how are they doing mentally and physically being on the clock all the time because you're providing? Um, and, you're, and they're not able to see boss lady. No, no. And, um, you know, it's been, it's some, you know, some of them are having a bit, you know, some of them are having a more difficult time and it's, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of it has to do with, um, I don't mean to sound, this doesn't make, this may come sound, come off as sounding bad, but it's not, it's how flexible you are. Some people are very much set in their ways and, and that's how they do things. But I've, I've really had to require 
my employees to be flexible right now. Um, so some of them are struggling. That's, just so you know, that's not a bad thing because it's not, it's not these times right now. I mean, everyone has to be flexible. I mean, it's what it is. I mean, month number one, I get it, but now we're going into month number three and yeah. so I figure that at this point on, if you're not flexible, then you're just really being stubborn because we're all in this. I mean, it's not just like a, yeah. like a, your town. It's not just like your state. It's the entire world is in this yeah. situation. Yeah. So that's been, um, so, and then, you know, I, it was definitely difficult at the beginning. Um, I, I, I feel like we're getting into more of a steady state. This is how it is. Um, but then also I'm a little, you know, I do definitely have the ensuring that um, there's not monotony, that there's, there is a whole interest that people are, um, are still engaged because do you um, do that, I apologize. Though, had, sorry. Oh, go for it. But, but how do you do that where, um, what you're doing is preparing food for individuals. Yes, the menu changes mm -hmm. month to month, but I mean, or week to week, um, is, is, it changes a week to week. It's month to month. month, month, to month. month. So how do you keep them to the point where it's not the same O every day, mm -hmm. same group of people? <laughs> how do you keep the groups getting along where I'm stuck with this group for I don't know how long? So, and you're the boss. I mean, so how are you keeping the flow going? I mean, what, what advice would you give to a, that's looking at this right now saying, yeah, how do you keep that flow going? Because our flow is starting to get really stagnant. Yeah. Um, well, first off, from the social aspect, I have Zoom cocktail hours. <laughs> I, think everyone, I, I think everyone's having those. <laughs> had that last night. Um, and as uh, one of, it, you know, it was orig so originally our staff meeting, which has now become Zoom cocktail hour. For those that are legal, I might add. Um, but so that that's definitely one of the ways. And the other ways is, um, you know, we're having to pivot the way that we, we gain new customers right now. Mm -hmm. um, and through that has, become, has come some new opportunities um, from a learning perspective. So for example, um, and that just, that is how we typically gain customers is by word of mouth. It's by um, our current customers telling wait, our friends. Wait, 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 before you go to the customers, I wanna pull back. Yeah. How are you keeping the staff engaged though? So how I am, so what I'm doing is a, the way that there's new tools that we're doing to, to gain that customer base, that's new learning opportunities for them. That's why gotcha. I that. gotcha. um, So, um, you know, whether it be we, ha we have a virtual environment that we're looking, we're using to get new customers. So um, that's been an opportunity for my staff to learn that new process. And so that's really how it's been is that, you know, the day to day process of making the meals, I really can't do much about that because it is, it is a pretty standard process. But what I can do is um, the tools that I'm using um, to interact with my customers, to, to gain new customers mm -hmm. and giving my staff the opportunity to understand them and learn them. So, yeah. What have you learned? I mean, you are a newbie, you are a newbie to this world. Um, yeah. And then we're in this pandemic. What have you learned personally for you during this time? Because we have all this time. You are going back and forth, just checking on everybody, but you are also at home and you have plenty of time. Um, you're not moving fast. You're not like trying to amp up a company. Um, what's that thing that you've like, got, gotten out of this to grow your business even more and faster? I just actually, I'm sorry. Let's just take the word faster out of just like, what have you learned? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think really it hasn't been skills. It's been, um, my, <laughs> my yard has never looked better. <laughs> <laughs> Garden centers are so happy right now. Like so um, yeah, so if it only would just rain, I would be a very happy camper a bit more. But um, I have, I, I'm a gardener, so I have a very extensive vegetable garden. So I've nice. um, been able to spend a lot of time on getting that up to speed for this year and um, in the planning process that it came along with that. So that's been... That's been, and just, you know, the, the little things you had around your house that you were like, oh, I'll get to that another day. Here's that other day. <laughs> I, 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 when my dad died five years ago, my dad was the green thumb of our family. And he, I mean, look, he'd grow anything from like just the wind. I mean, fruit trees, we have mango trees, papaya trees. Like we have all these trees in, in our, at our home in Florida. Like I should say, like mom and dad's home because I'm from up here. And um, I was like, when he died, I'm like, I go, I, 
I came home and all the cactuses, I mean, I had cactuses for years and they all died. And then I'm like, I go, I'm going to do a garden. I'm going to do an indoor garden. And I was overzealous and I bought 23 different things. And it was just crazy. And literally the only thing that did well was lettuce. And then it created all these little tiny flies in my house because lettuce attracts all, makes all these little flies. Yep. It was crash and burn, carrots, crunch, like everything I touch. I'm like, I go, man. So this year I have the rhythm. I have like, it is so beautiful this year. Yeah. So yes, vegetable gardens are fantastic. And yes. Everything. But that's like what you did at home. But at home, yeah. what did you do and what skills did you learn or add where I'm going to grow the business in this way or that way? Because you come out, you come out running, yeah. you start a business, and this is like one trajectory. And all mm -hmm. additional time, and you're looking, hey, what about what? What's your what about what? New customer channels, so new ways of attracting customers, ways that I didn't necessarily think of, um, and and getting um, and in just in general stepping outside of your your comfort zone. Um, it's that's been really the the name of the game over the past two months has been um, when I'm you know what I'm comfortable with and having to really step outside of that comfort zone. Um, but, uh, you know, definitely, um, upper, I, you know, operations has always been something that in improving processes and making them efficient. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of the things that I was struggling with was, um, because the staff that I, I don't think I made that clear is that, um, when I purchased the store, the staff stayed, and it was a it was an, a blessing because they they're the ones that do the day to day operations. They make sure I have enough food, um, those types of things. Um, but um, they, you know, when you've done something one way for 15 years and you're not necessarily open to change, well, guess what? <laughs> you're gonna change, and you're gonna. <laughs> um, so, but really that's been um, the, definitely the learning new ways to attract customers that has not, that wasn't necessarily ways that I was aware of. Um, that's, that's been, that's really been the number one way or the number one thing that I've learned in all this. I think that's, I mean, that's by far, you know, there's so many companies that I work with that um, they don't know who their target audience is. Mm -hmm. Oh, how to actually attract them. So they're just thinking, I have this amazing product and it's just there and they're just not understanding like, but, but who's it for? It's amazing product, but who's it for? And so yep. spend that time to really engage with them is so, so, so important. I mean, I say this all the time, it's so important. So I'm so happy that this was like a great time for you to start thinking about yeah. not just the, the everyday clients or the clients that came with the business, but all these additional individuals that had no idea that you existed, which is great. Um, Corporate world, you said at the beginning, you learned a lot of things from the corporate world coming to this business. Um, mm -hmm. Everything you learned in your MBA program, our MBA program, is it coming into play right now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, particularly as it relates to, um, you know, just the networking aspect of it has mm -hmm. been, um, you know, there's definitely things that, you also have to, uh, you know, one of the biggest things I've learned is that there's thing you have to know what you don't know um, and you have to rely and you have to know who to go to um, to rely on that in front those things, whether it be a legal thing, whether it be a marketing thing, yeah. um, whether it be a tax thing. Um, those are the type of things that I just, you know, there's definitely some very fluid aspects of getting an MBA. Um, but that those are the, some of the things I learned is that to know when you don't know, um, and, and know who the right people are to, to make sure that you're doing things right. Um, but really the biggest, you know, I feel like, I feel like entrepreneurship is a mindset and it's definitely a, um, it's something I always had, but never really saw a great opportunity to use it. Um, and here it is. And it's been, it's been a ride. It's been a wild ride. <laughs> so what are two or three things that you'd say to someone that is, I mean, like, again, you did it and it's fresh in your mind. Mm -hmm. 
they're at home. They have been thinking about it for quite some time to do something that's more passionate, yep. um, but they have a steady job and now they're home with their families. I'm enjoying that time with my family. I'm enjoying not commuting. I'm enjoying not being micromanaged by that boss that's over my shoulder every single day. And maybe this might be the time. What should I prepare for? What, I mean, what's the, what is the, I don't know, the three step, two step, five step thing that I should like really consider wholeheartedly before I make the leap? Um, I think the number one thing for me was no longer having that comfortable weekly salary and <laughs> the benefits that came along with it. Um, so making sure that you feel comfortable that, um, that you are, that you are taking a financial risk that you know that you're not going to have that, that you're not going to have necessarily have that steady income. Um, but you know, really what, and I feel where this has been an amazing um, just change of lifestyle for me has been that it's something that I believed in, that it was something that I was passionate about. It's something, it's a product that I believe in. And that, if you're, if that is something that you're looking to do, that is, that's, in, that's imperative. It has to be something that, because it's, it, you can't shut it off. There's um, one of the things that, you know, with being a small business owner, you, you have to be, you're on call 24 seven, 24 seven, whether it be the mm -hmm. um, best example I can have is that I had a power failure at 2 a.m. on a Friday night, Saturday morning, and I had to be there just, you know, making sure that my, my product was staying safe. Those are the type of things that, you know, you, you just have to be, and the only way that's really going to work is that if you're passionate about it, if it's something that you really believe in. Um, and that's really the biggest advice I have is that, you know, the rest of the stuff, you know, it's going to come, but it has to be something that you, you're passionate about and that you believe in because it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be your life. And there is no, there's really no way as a small business owner, you can't, it's hard to turn it off. Very hard. Um, I, sleep it, I sleep it. I eat it. I breathe it every day. Exactly. Content comes in to me every day. Clients call in every day. I mean, like, I get it. It's, it's, it's there. And I think that that's, that's the, the essence of being a small business owner, being a startup. I mean, you're like, it, it is part of you everywhere you go. You can't let it go. And so um, I think that's one of the, when I see businesses that grow bigger or they uh, get a CEO and the founder's like, what am I going to do? Cause this is what I've been doing. And like, I mean, this has been all of our, my life. And now I, a CEO is in charge of it cause it's gotten a little bit bigger and they're just at a loss. Mm -hmm. but now they're lost because they don't know who they are. It's an identity crisis. Um, yep. the industry, the food industry in itself, um, honestly, I mean, it's like Amazon blown up. I mean, it, it's blown. Mm -hmm. I, I don't ever recall other than when there's like a snowstorm that the shelves are empty, but shelves are empty consistently now, right. which is so insane. Um, mm -hmm. we're saying parents were saying to me how we're buying food and we're going to the market more often, which we don't enjoy going to the market more often. We are going to the market because the kids are eating through it. They're not at school eating lunch. So right. they eat through the food so fast because it's, the, the, it's their form of, of solving their own anxiety. Stress eaters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so what, I mean, what does this say about the industry? Was it prepared? And how do you see the industry, the food industry coming, like in the future? Like what, what should they have done? What should they do for the future? Um, because people were just like, they were, they were just, they felt like they were let down by their yep. markets, um, including the people that were, are working there. They were like, we weren't prepared. Yep. So what's your vision or your thoughts being in corporate world? Um, I mean, you look, like, you've owned this business. Um, you went mm -hmm. through a program. Like overall, what is your thought? What are your thoughts on that? So I think really the biggest thing is that where we weren't prepared is taking care of our minimum wage workers. Um, that has been the number one and ensuring that just because someone that there are that minimum wage doesn't understanding that they are such an important part of your food chain. It, yeah. it, that's one of, and that's quite frankly, um, I don't just insider tip. We haven't seen, we haven't seen it yet that there's definitely give it a few more months. And that's where we're definitely going to see some additional um, food chain issues. 
um, that I've been told that late summer is when I'm going to see some substantial food chain issues. Well, and that's well, just well, because, you, well, mm -hmm. like, when you say that, like what's, I mean, when you say the issues, like what, what should we prepare for? Product, like oh. there's going to be shortage, shortages of particular products. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that's just because we, there were, you know, the product that was on hand, we're running out of. So you're that's that, really, I mean, you're seeing that with the basics of sugar, yeah. I mean, before the toilet paper, but sugar, flour, there's specific things where, mm -hmm. yeah, you're not finding it in the big markets. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I mean, I was looking for flour sugar and I ended up going to a, a local little bodega, which was empty. Like, I mean, nobody was going yep. and this little guy was like, I go, no one's coming in my store full stocks. I mean, like the shelves were full and yep. yet he's like. I'm here, I'm here. So yeah, it is very, very surprising about that. So uh, yep. what else are you seeing? So that's, it's, it's um, some of the unique products that we, that I have not been able to get. Um, you know, something as funny as enchilada sauce. I had trouble getting enchilada sauce last month. Um, I know, and that's what it says. It, it's like, really- It's just a random thing. <laughs> Just happened to be that was what you know that particular plant shut down and then therefore they weren't producing it and couldn't get it um so that's you know really i think what the, in general what this pandemic has brought to light is the you know how much the minimum wage worker is keeping the lights on how much the work that they do is what um is what is in essence what feeds us if you think about it um you know and really that I think that's what us as a as a culture we're not prepared for. We weren't prepared to um, to take to take care of them, to make sure that um, that they're that, that they were healthy. Um, and it, it, it feels that's you know, that was one of the main things. There was definitely some single points of single points of failure um, in some parts. Um, but I think that I know our supplier has been very flexible with us and has been and has done an amazing job at making sure that we have what we need. Mm -hmm. um, but there's definitely that that aspect of the um, of who's really keeping things going and um, and what are we doing to ensure that they are taken care of and that they're safe. Yeah. So. Excellent. Um, your doors open tomorrow, the world opens tomorrow, whatever new normal that's going to be mm -hmm. and about, uh, what's your first day look like that, that your entire team can be together again? Um, I will say that it is mm -hmm. <laughs> jubilance. <laughs> um, I, it's going to be, um, I, you know, definitely one of the ways that our business, um, thrives is because of our customer interactions. And we're just, you know, we can, we can't get that through it through a door or through the uh, window of a car right now. Yeah. Um, so just, you know, and being with them and talking about them and and being an outlet for them and hearing what's going on in their lives. So that's going to be um, the number one. We're still we're still waiting to hear what that's going to, you know, when we can yeah. reopen. Um, that hasn't been made clear because we are because we are self-service, um, we're not expecting it to be anytime soon. Um, I've planned to be curbside pickup through August 1st. Okay. Um, I, you know, how much longer that's gonna be after that, I really don't know. Um, but at the same time, until, the sad thing is until there is a better control of this disease, um, I don't think I'm gonna be able to break away from that that team structure. Right. It's just, it's, it's too risky to be, to have, a, you know, because, and that's where I go back to the reliance on your, on your staff, because I have to make sure they're healthy. I have to make sure they're safe because if I, if I don't have them, I, I would have to close my doors for a period of time. So, um, so that being said, um, I'm going to have to keep this I don't, so I don't see when the next time is that my whole staff will be together. And that's, that's sad. <laughs> um, well, I, well, I was going to say, like, when you, when you mentioned you had them in clusters, just out of curiosity, did you ever consider taking one out, you quarantine yep. a little bit and then switching them out so that way they can see yep. each other or, or have you, I don't know, cause you didn't mention that part. So I was just like, as you mentioned, I'm like, I go, I, I should just ask if they get to intertwine. I, 
Yep. And in fact, so our store is closed for a week. So we, we've already talked about, do we need to shift that around at all? Oh, okay. Um, but, um, I, you know, I, this is the, this is, there's the financial aspect of that. And if I'm telling someone they can't come to work for a week, then I'm, I'm going to pay them. I'm not going to, sure. I'm not, right. you know, even though they are a part-time hourly employee, I'm, I'm not going to, because they're, they can't come to the store because I'm telling them they can, I'm still going to pay them. So there's definitely, I have that financial part. I need to consider. So. Totally understand. Um, last question. Um, if you had an ask, a personal and a professional ask to anyone that is watching this, what mm -hmm. would be a personal and professional ask that you really would love to engage people with? Um, from a personal perspective, it's definitely um, the, you know, Saying thank you to essential workers. Um, it's been I'm sit there and say yes. And yes to this one. Yes. Um, it's definitely been um, some of the some of the you know most trying times. You know, just just making you know just thinking about how um, you're putting your health at risk to make sure others have the food they need to sustain their life. Um, and that, that, that is my personal ask because I, and again, I, I don't, I, I don't know what I would have done without, without those essential workers, um, whether that be in my own personal life and in the, um, and in my professional life. And then for my professional life, I believe you're going to put some stuff on there. Check us out. See, um, see who we are, see what we do. Um, one of the things that I mentioned, we're, we're starting to offer delivery. So even if um, you're not so close to our store, you'd be very surprised how far people travel <laughs> to see us. Um, I, I have customers that come an hour drive each way. So um, people um, just need to get out of the house. That's why. <laughs> yeah, that's the other funny thing is that people are like, okay, so my my monthly trip to go get my food is I'm getting out of the house. <laughs> um, but you know that that would be check us out, see if this is something we'd love to talk to you more to see if we can be a um, dinner time solution. You know, I do say our target audience is um, working moms, um, but I was not a working mom when I became a customer and. <sighs> Here we go. That was definitely, I mean, think about when I became a customer three years ago. Did I ever imagine I would, it would be such a change of my life? Nope. <laughs> but here I am. So um, it's definitely it can be a solution for anyone. You know, we, we jokingly refer that if you eat dinner, you're our target customer. So, we, so that would be my uh, professional ask. I love, I mean, I, I mean, I, I'm so proud of you for doing this. I mean, this is, you. Huge. I mean, you know, again, I mean, so many years in corporate, I think this is such a big deal when you make this massive leap. Mm -hmm. I think that um, you are, I mean, like, you don't, this is the question I ask of everyone. Like, what's your thoughts? Like, are you, what's the advice that you'd give out? And you are fresh out of the gate. And it's, it's, I mean, it's commendable. It's commendable. And you were just hit hard with <laughs> so monumental, mon 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 I can't even say the word. You, you know what I mean. Yes, I know what you mean. But I, like, you were you were hit so hard with something so big, and I think that most people are like, "What did I just do?" Mm -hmm. Rely on your network. Um, you know, to, you know, lean on your network. Take that advice. Um, and uh, whether that be in my in my circumstances, it was a network of other store owners that was going through the same challenges I was. Mm -hmm. um, and then also um, at home, leaning on leaning on my husband, <laughs> literally and figuratively. Um, and did you, marry, did you marry well? Because honestly, this was <laughs> hey, we just started no, well, the, it, it, the house it, together. Yay! Um, it was more of a you know he. Uh, things that I, he, he was home, you know, where during all this. So, um, things that I didn't, I've always been the person that did the things I had to rely on him. So on, in, in both a personal and professional, um, just rely on your network, um, lean on them, look for advice, um, talk through your challenges with them. Um, you know, I'm an extrovert, so I always gain strength from talking to others, um, and and I always that's how I work best. But even if you're an introvert, 
you can't you can't take it all on yourself you can't it um what do you mean what do you mean I, I try to do that every day <laughs> <laughs> but that's it so that that for me is is, is it would be my number one recommendation is that um don't don't do it all yourself lean on others um get that advice you're awesome, Amy. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Oh my God. It's like, I was so happy when I literally looked my LinkedIn, like alert, like I mean, the alerts on everyone in my, in my life. And I was like, I go, I'm like, she has a business. She has a business. <laughs> I, like, I know. So no, I'm so, I'm so happy. And again, I'm not going to lie to you. This is my guilty pleasure. Whenever I do these like conversations, I'm like guilty pleasure. I get to check on everyone um, because I could send a postcard. I could send a card. I could send a text so much better. This is so much better. Thank you. I appreciate very much. Just, hey, who doesn't like to talk about themselves, right? I know. Like everyone's like, I go, this is weird. I'm like, it's not weird. You're just talking to me. It's just like, yeah. still, oh, thank still, you. Still the crazy me of, uh, I don't know, like, just like this, just see it as in class president is still just, still just talking to you. <laughs> thank you for the opportunity.